Good morning, it's Ravi from templechurch.online. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Today I'm bringing you another new sermon from the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. And the title of the sermon is Daniel Purposed in His Heart. Before we go to the, go into the sermon, let's pray. Dear Jesus, bless me and use me as your mighty vessel. Talk through me to your children, not my words, but your words. Put your Holy Spirit on me, give me wisdom and knowledge, and Father, bless your children, Father, those who are listening, open their minds and hearts so that they may receive the word and store them in their hearts so that no devil would be able to steal them. I pray, Father, Lord, that they will be able to bear fruit, Father, and apply this message to their lives and be blessed. In Jesus' name we ask, Amen, Amen. Let's read channel chapter 1, verses 3 till 9. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that, the, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured and skilful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding signs, and such as ability in them to stand in the king's place, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaladians. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave them names, or he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah, and of Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of eunuchs. Even though Daniel and his friends were in foreign land, yet they didn't forget who they were and who their God was. Though they were far from the land, yet they were loyal to their God and had a close relationship with God. Daniel and his friends were captives in Babylon. They were not guests. You might ask a guest, do you need coffee or tea or cool drink or uh, give them a choice whether you want to take a, want a steak or a chittle snizzle or a burger. But as a captive, you don't have much choice. You have to eat what is said before you. But Daniel purpose in his heart not to defile himself with the king's food. King's food is the best food, rich in protein and of fine quality, cooked by the best chefs of the time and also served with best wine. Why Daniel rejected such food, such good food? One of the reasons may be, maybe it's not kosher and eating such food may defile him. What does kosher mean? Kosher means fit or appropriate food and describes a food that is suitable for the Jews to eat. In Deuteronomy 4 verses 4 to 5 it says, These are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep and the goat, the hart and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pygog, and the wild ox, and the cameos. In Leviticus 11, 1 to 10, and also 13 to 23, there are some food that are okay for the Jews. Let's read Leviticus 1, Leviticus 11, 1 to 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts, that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the curd among the beasts they shall eat. So whichever cheweth the curd and has cloven footed and parted the hoof they can eat. And also nevertheless they shall they shall ye not eat of them that chew the curd or of them that divide the hoof as the camel because he cheweth the curd but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the curd, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the curd, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he 
divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the curd, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass ye shall not touch, they are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in water, in the seas, in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the river, and all that move in the water of any living thing which is in the water, they shall be an abomination unto you. So whatever there is no fins, Jews are not supposed to eat. No fins, no scales, not supposed to eat. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the falls. They shall not be eaten. They are, they are an abomination. The eagle, the ostrich, and the osprey, the vulture, the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, the owl and the night hawk, and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, the cormorant and the great owl, the swan, the pelican, the gear eagle, the stock, the heron after her kind, the lopping and the bat, all falls that creep, going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that go upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them may eat, the locustus after his kind, the pal locutus after his kind, the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which ye have, four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Leviticus 11.29 also says, these also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel, the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind. And also Leviticus 11.44 For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourself, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So these are the foods that are suitable for Jews, anything with scales and anything without scales and no fins, they are not supposed to eat creepy things like locators and beetles. They can eat and anything that chew the curd and have cloven footed <clears throat> and divided hoof, they can eat. And the second thing, the Jews are not supposed to eat any animal that has blood still in the animal. So. When they kill any animal for food, they must first drain out the blood. Only afterwards they could eat the meat. In 1 Samuel 14, 28-33, there is an example. Then answered one of the people and said, The father straightly charged the people with an oath. It's, it's about Jonathan when he defeated the Philistines, saying, Curse be the man that eateth any food this day, and the people may faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you, how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of the enemies which they found. For had they not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they smote the Philistines that day from Michmash to Agilon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood so here you see people did eat them with the blood then they told Saul saying behold the people sin against the Lord in that they eat with the blood and he said ye have transgressed roll a great stone unto me this day so you're not supposed for Jews are not supposed to eat uh, any animal with blood still in it they have to drain it out <clears throat> Leviticus 7 10 to 12 it says and whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the souls. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourn among you eat blood. Also Deuteronomy 12:16 says only you shall not eat the blood you shall pour it upon the earth as water so you should not eat animals with blood on it it's for the Jews so Daniel doesn't want to defile himself and another main reason 
because uh, because um, the Babylonians don't follow the kosher methods or they don't drain the blood as the Israelites do. So one of the reasons that's why Daniel doesn't want to dep defile himself. Another thing is the food might be offered to idols. <clears throat> the king might have offered to idols and that's why Daniel doesn't want to eat such best quality food. So, and also one thing, to fellowship with the king at the table meant fellowship with the false deities. Number 25, 1 to 3, it says, And the Israelite abode in Shittim, and people began to commit wodom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined, joined himself unto Balfior, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So, <clears throat> eating the sacrifice means joining himself to their God and having fellowship with their false deities. So also 1 Corinthians 10, 20-21 says, But I say that these things with the Gentile sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that you should have fellowship with the devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of the devils. Now God has brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of eunuchs because Daniel purposed in his heart not to eat. So um, the Babylonians used to worship many gods. So <clears throat> and also the Momites and the Ammonites. So they are offering to devils. They are not real gods. So do not take fellowship. So the Israelites would not take fellowship with the. <coughs> other people while they're eating they don't want to sit down with them and eat their food um, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of eunuchs because Daniel purposed in his heart not to eat Daniel made a proposition with the chief eunuch let us try our diet for 10 days and see what happens if after that time you are not pleased with the result we will do as you say here Daniel risked his life here Many, many people purpose a lot of things in their heart, but only few do what they have purpose. Going to the eunuch and going to the eunuch, Daniel tells his determination. As a result, God made Daniel favorable. Daniel risked his life. He could have been slain. He could, the eunuch would have gone to the king and said, like, he's not ordering, listening to my orders, and Daniel would be in trouble. As a result, God made Daniel favorable because he determined his heart. Psalm 17, 3 <clears throat> says, Transgression with the mouth. Many people <clears throat> defile themselves with the mouth. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purpose that my mouth shall not Transgress. The, the psalmist decided not to transgress with his mouth. The psalmist purposed in his heart not to defile himself by talking filthy things, not gossiping filthy things, not talking anything that is not good. <clears throat> Nowadays, many people transgress with their mouth, they curse, they talk filthy. Even tell filthy stories to each other and take the name of the God in vain. They lie and gossip bad things against innocent persons. They fret false rumors. With the same mouth we bless God and with the same mouth we curse man who is created in the image of God. This not ought to be. A fountain cannot produce fresh and bitter water at the same time. James 3.12 it says, Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Can a vine Fix, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. We are the fountain of God. We cannot speak bad things at the same time as good things. We have to speak good things and no bad things. We need to bless. We are not to curse. We are not to spread false gossips. We are not even to curse. We are not even to take the name of the God in vain. Also Job decided, purposed in his heart not to look upon a maid. He says, I made a covenant with my eyes when they, sh 
when then should I think upon a maid? <clears throat> Job 31, Job 31, 1, it says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Job made a covenant that he should not look upon a maid. Also, King Solomon purposed to build a temple. First Kings 5, 5 says, And behold, a purpose to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spoke unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set upon thy throne in the room, he shall build a house unto my name. So, <clears throat> it's one thing to purpose and one thing to do. It's one thing to determine and one thing to action. And these people not only purpose in their hearts, but they determine and put into action. What about you Christians? Do you purpose anything not to sin, not to commit adultery, not to commit fornication, not to look at pornography, not to steal, not to lie? You're just in words or in deeds as well. <clears throat> Acts 19.21, it says, Paul purposed to see Rome. He wanted to see Rome. Uh, why? To be a testimony. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in his spirit when he had passed through Macedonia, Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, I've, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. And Psalms 101.2, Walking before God. Did, have you purposed to walk before God? Even in your home when no one is there. <clears throat> Let's read Psalm 101 too. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I'll walk within my house with a perfect heart. What about you? Have you purposed in your heart to walk before God righteously with a perfect heart? Many people, when people around, they pray and sing hymns. When no one around there, they switch on the TV or laptop and watch adult movies when people are watching they pray and they see Bible channels and um, Bible documentaries and when there's no one watching there are different people they watch all sort of movies etc when people are there watching they take Bible when they're not they take magazines which are not appropriate to look at you know people may not see your wickedness but god does genesis 38 7 till 10 it's about judah's son heir and heir judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the lord and the lord slew him you know why and judah said unto onan go into thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother and onan knew that the seed should not be his and came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest they should, lest he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So you might think that no one sees you, but God sees you. God knows what's in your heart. God looks unto you. <clears throat> one must purpose in his heart what he will give to the Lord. Many people make promise to God. If you bless me, I will give this amount of money. After getting blessed, they give less than they promised. If you give me this job, I'll give you my first salary. After getting the job, they forget to give instead. They have drink parties and friends with them. Instead of giving first salary, they party. Have you purpose in his heart to maintain sexual purity? Because fornication is a planned sin. Young ladies, no sex before marriage. Young Joseph refused a willing woman. One must purpose in his heart to avoid intoxicating beverage and drugs. Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Daniel purposes in heart not to defile himself. What about you? Matthew 15, 18 to 20 says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These things which defile a man. So these are the things which defile a man. <clears throat> Enoch, walk with God. What about you? Do you purpose to walk with God? To walk with the Lord and to live a holy life? Are you surrendering your life to God? These are Lent seasons. Are you purposed to live a holy life to God? 
or you want to live like the Gentiles, like other people. Choice is yours. Daniel purpose, Job purpose, Solomon purpose, and they've been blessed. When you purpose, God will show favor. Even people who hate you will show you favor. I hope that God bless this message. For Jews, certain foods that defile them, but what defiles our, our Christians is these things. Evil thoughts that proceed from the heart. To commit adultery to commit murder you know murder you may not even like actually kill someone but if you hate someone in heart God says God consider that to be harder if you look at a woman and lust even though you haven't done physically but God thinks it is adultery fornication you know sleeping with other people before marriage is called fornication thefts false witness some people doesn't shut their mouth they have to talk even though there is no truth they add masala to it and then they tell people as if it is real make them believe they can't control their mouth they blaspheme God whenever they don't get anything it's God's fault when something bad happens it's God's fault they never pray for God's protection they never ask God anything and suddenly when things come, they blame God. A good fountain pours good water. A bad fountain, bitter water. A good tree bears good fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. You are the good tree. You are God's children. So purpose in, us, in your hearts to live a life that is pleasing to God and not to defile yourself with anything that grieves the Holy Spirit God. I hope this is a blessing to you all. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I pray for our Lord that you bless the people who are watching this Father. And Lord, during this Lent season, bless everyone, Father Lord, as they are fasting and praying. Here they pray, Father Lord, and answer their prayers, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, that <clears throat> the purpose in this life to live a holy life, Father, that is pleasing to you and be a blessing to many people <coughs> and answer the answer their prayers Lord Jesus and Father protect their families Father from every sickness from every Lord problems Lord bless them with good health take away the corona AIDS and hepatitis Father those are suffering heal them Father Lord and brain tumors and skin infections and kidney problems and liver problems Lord Heal all people, Lord, and those who are struggling financially, Lord, uh, take their financial problems, those in debt, Father, Lord, clear their debts, and those who are unmarried and looking for a good prospect, give them good husbands and wives, and those who wanted children, give them good children, Lord, and those who want jobs, give them good jobs, Father, bless everyone, in Jesus' name we ask, Amen. Thank you for watching.